Sharp tools are still a must if you want to do high quality woodworking. Sanders and abrasives still don't fare a board as well as a hand plane does. And if you need to move a lot of wood without making a bunch of dust, a sharp chisel is still the best option. It seems some people like to make a time-consuming ritual out of sharpening their blades. But here in the real world, we'd like to get the job done. Many of the woods I use dull a blade fairly quickly. It's not how sharp you get the blade, it's how often you sharpen it. I always keep a grinder and my hone nearby the work area. There are some basic do's and don'ts with sharpening tools. Do always wear eye protection. Steel shards can get in your eye and you won't feel them. If they're left there for very long, they will make rust rings on your cornea. This can permanently impede your vision and take some kind of surgery to correct. Don't ever let your blades or knives get hot. As soon as the blade starts to turn blue, it is too late. You have annealed and softened the edge. It will no longer hold a sharp edge. The old guys I studied under, if they caught you doing this, even to your own tools, would give you a severe tongue lashing and send you home. One of the other don't do's is grinding soft metals on the stone. Soft metals like aluminum, bronze, and copper will load up the stone. It will actually get hot and may explode. Along that same note, the tools and cutters should be clean before you grind them. Wood resins, glue deposits, and rust will all load up your grinding wheel and clog up the hone. These chisels were left outside and have a little bit of surface rust on them. Rust is harder than steel and will actually dull your hone. It's best to wire brush this off before you start sharpening. I first set the tool rest to the preferred angle that I want. I personally don't use any elaborate guides or jigs to grind my tools. I use so many different tools that I need to change this angle frequently. Grinding on the face of the grinding wheel produces what they call a hollow grind. With a hollow grind, the hone only needs to sharpen the very point of the cutter. Most of the time, the cutter can be re-honed several times before you have to re-grind it. You can see here that I use my forefinger as a guide along the bottom of the tool rest. Sliding the tool along so that it cuts clear across the cutter nice and even. I use a very light pressure against the stone, easing up the pressure at the end of the cut. I always keep the tool moving across the grinding wheel so that it doesn't get hot. I often check the temperature against the palm of my hand to make sure it's not getting too hot. If it is getting too hot, I can quench it in water and cool it down, or if I have several tools I'm sharpening, I can just put that one aside and work on one of the other ones. This does take some practice to get good at, and you should check your work to make sure you're grinding it straight and square. After a while, you'll notice that the grinding wheel loads up with metal shards. This will impede its ability to cut and make it so that the work will start getting hot. We address this problem with a wheel dresser. This is a diamond stone dresser. The stone dresser actually removes the face of the wheel itself and brings it back to new sharp stone. You carefully move the stone dresser back and forth against the face of the wheel keeping the wheel nice and flat. 
You can also use the stone dresser to actually shape the grinding wheel so that you can sharpen gouges and carving tools. A good indication that the edge is starting to get sharp is when the sparks start coming over the top. After you have ground your tool sharp, you will notice that there is a tiny burr on the point of it. This needs to be taken off with a hone. When I first started, we used to hone our tools with a whetstone. You had to be very careful to use the whole stone and try and keep these stones flat. Today, we can use a diamond hone and they stay absolutely flat. I use a continuous diamond hone with a fine grit. These stones come in three grits, extra fine, fine, and coarse. The extra fine seems to load up. The coarse is simply too aggressive. The fine seems to work just fine. I use just a little bit of light oil or honing solution to keep the metal shard suspended and easy to wipe off. By gently rocking the tool back and forth on the hone, I can feel when I have it at just the right angle. Then I can keep it at that angle as I hone the face. I hone both the hollow ground face and the flat side till I can no longer feel the burr. This doesn't take very long with a diamond hone. The tool is now ready to go back to work. These videos are brought to you by the Maritime Preservation Trust. Please don't forget to subscribe, share with your friends, visit our website, and become a member of the Maritime Preservation Trust.